Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Um, today we'll be going through a soothing, calming evening flow. It's especially great for before bed or just generally in the evening when you want to calm down. So we'll find some gentle stretches. Um, could be thought of as quite rejuvenating as well, but mostly calming. Um, but really, yeah, juicy, lovely stretches. For this practice, it's really great if you have a block or two. It doesn't matter what size they are. If, if you only have one, that's fine as well. Um, but something to kind of, uh, we're going to keep it under our backs. If you have a bolster, that works as well, if you don't happen to have blocks. We'll um, start in a downward facing dog. So straight into it, you can tuck your toes under and start to lift the hips up towards the ceiling, towards the sky, pressing your hands firmly on the mat and start to create a really long spine. You can find a bit of movement here, maybe pedaling the feet, hips moving side to side, bending one knee at a time. So really finding those tight spots in the hips, in the hip flexors, in the hamstrings. Keep pushing the mat away from you. Relaxing the head, the neck. Good. Taking a really big breath in here, fill the lungs all the way to the rim. And then open the mouth, sigh the air out. Good. We're then going to move forward, bringing our knees onto the mat, and then lower all the way onto the mat. With your hands under your shoulders, we're going to inhale into a cobra. So pull the shoulders back as you open through the chest, making this really slow, and then exhale back down. Good. We'll do that a few more times. So as you inhale, Really widen through the collarbones, pull the shoulders back, activate through the back muscles, and exhale back down. Good. Doing that once more. Inhale. And exhale. Good. We're then going to reach our left arm to our left. So the hand is um, at shoulder height, so the arm is 90 degrees from the body. Then bending your right knee, we're going to push onto our left side. So you can use your right hand to push you there. Maybe stepping the right foot behind the left one. So that the left arm essentially kind of gets locked um, in that position behind you. So the hand is still 90 degrees from the shoulder. And then start to soften here. So the more you soften your hips, your legs, they'll pull you back and pull you deeper into the stretch. You can also soften the neck, maybe close the eyes for a moment, just allowing for that stretch and also that twist in the spine to happen. Take an inhale here, really deep. And then we'll start to slowly turn back onto our stomachs. Good. Taking one cobra in between, so hands under the shoulders. Inhale up and exhale back down. Now extending the right arm out to the right. We're going to bend the left knee and then turn onto your right side. The left foot can step behind the right leg. And once you've found the pose, try to soften there. Through the hips, through the shoulders, through the neck. It's actually quite an effortless pose once you allow it to be. Good. We'll then start to turn back onto our stomachs. Both hands can come under the shoulders. Inhaling into a cobra once more. And exhale, good. From here we're going to slide our hands forward so that we find a sphinx pose. So elbows are at 90 degree angles. The hips ground down. You can gently sway them from side to side a few times just to make sure you relax them. 
And then we'll start to widen through the collarbones. Make sure you really plug your fingertips into the mat. Imagine pulling the mat back. That way you start to really roll the shoulders back and open through the collarbones. You're staying here. If you want to drop your head down so that you relax the neck and really lengthen the back of the neck, you can do that too. And if you are there, maybe you start to find a swaying movement through the neck. It might feel really good for the back of the neck, also the sides. You can find uh, different spots here during this movement that maybe feel a little bit tighter and perhaps stop there for a moment. Good. Keep pressing the elbows into the mat. Good. Well, then lift the head up if you had it lowered. And then we're going to peel the whole body off the mat. Good. Coming onto your hands. Take a breath here. Arrive into your plank. And then exhale. Come back into a downward facing dog. Good. Take an inhale in. And exhale out. We're then going to step forward so that we arrive at a malasana. So uh, feet come towards the long edges of the mat and we sit down, elbows to the insides of the knees. Long spine, shoulders pulling back. Again, collarbones widening. And keep pushing the knees away from you to get a really lovely opening for the hips and the lower back. Here as well, if you happen to have that block and you feel like you need a bit of support, you can always bring it under your sitting bones. Good. Staying for one more breath. And then as we exhale, we're going to tilt forward into a forward fold. So you can pedal the feet a little bit closer to each other, maybe hip width distance apart. Then soften through the knees, allow the upper body to really rest over the thighs. We'll grab opposite elbows, finding a ragdoll pose. Now making sure the neck is super relaxed. The back of the neck is long and the chin starts to naturally tuck in slightly towards the chest. The lower back also naturally lengthens. Good. We'll release the hands and halfway lift just once. So inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale. Hands come onto the mat and we'll step into a downward facing dog. From here, as you next inhale, reach your right leg up and then exhale, move towards a pigeon pose on your right side. So right knee towards the right wrist. Left leg can start to slide back as you come closer to the mat. Good. Make sure your hips are comfortable. Start to really relax them into the shape. And once you're there, you can start to come down onto your forearms maybe all the way onto your belly. If you do have the blocks, they might be a nice addition here. Either if you've got a bit tighter hips, you can pop one under the right glute, or you can, for example, lean on one. That way the neck relaxes a bit more. Then we breathe here, pausing for a moment. Returning to those deep breaths, where every exhale releases the right glute, well, generally the hips a little bit closer to the mat, where every exhale releases a bit of tension from the body. Good. Take one more breath here. And then we'll start to come back onto our hands. 
Bringing our weight onto the right glute, we'll swing the left leg forward. Keep the right knee bent. Make sure you're sitting on your sitting bones and then reach the arms up, find length. And then as you exhale, fold over the left leg. You can keep a micro bend in the knee here as well. That way you might get your stomach a little bit closer to the thigh and that way you also lengthen the lower back. Good. Oh, then straighten it out completely. So it depends on which area you want to target more. Take one more inhale. Exhale, start to roll the spine back up. Now you can bend both knees, cross the ankles and find your way back into a downward facing dog. Good. Taking a breath here. And exhale. We'll then inhale the left leg up behind us. And exhale, move the knee towards the left wrist and slide the right leg back. Good. First, making sure you're quite comfortable here. You can sway the hips from side to side, maybe pop a block under the left glute. Perhaps come down onto your forearms. You can lean on the block here as well. So try different variations and also your hips on this side might be different from the other side. So bear in mind those side differences and just kind of work gently with that. Start to settle here. Once again, return to your breath. So often when we forget to kind of observe the breath, we also forget to properly breathe. And it's so important, especially in these uh, deep stretches, to find softness in the body. And with deep, long breaths, we can very easily start to relax and soften the body. Take your final inhale here. And then exhale. You can push back ah. onto your hands. Bring your weight onto the left glute and swing the right leg forward. Left knee still bent. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And then exhale, fold over the leg. Good. Either keeping the leg completely straight or with a micro bend there in the knee. Try to soften the upper body towards the legs, not forcing anything. Good, final inhale. And then exhale, roll the spine all the way up. Good. Now we can bring both legs out in front of us Grabbing the blocks or block, we're going to come and lie down on them. So I now happen to have one big and one small, but it doesn't have a matter if you only have one or if you have two that are the same size, that's perfectly fine. I just now happen to have these two. So what we're going to do is we're going to, if you have a big one and a small one, you can take the big one closer to you, the small one further away from you. See how that feels? Then you can play around uh, if that's too high for you. You can also turn... Uh, the blocks the lower way around if it's too intense. What we'll do is we'll come and lie down on the block so that the higher block ends just kind of below the shoulder blades. That way as you release your upper body over the blocks, your head will rest on the other block and your arms can open out to the sides. So making sure with the lower block, if you've only got one block then it has to be the lower block, Make sure that that's not sticking into any of your vertebrae. So make sure that it feels comfortable. It shouldn't feel uncomfortable. So if there's any discomfort there, please adjust. And most probably you'll then have to lift the block higher up, so closer to your head. Good. So this is also very possible to do with just one block where you remove the one from under your head fully. 
quite a big opening for the neck. So it's a bit more comfortable to have a block under your head too. Try to release and soften here. The shoulders can start to melt down, the chest opens. And you can keep your arms by your sides in a sort of T shape like I have now. Or you can start to lift them up towards a Y shape. And maybe take a moment there to see how that feels. Or you can lift the arms all the way up, either keeping them there as they are, so just sort of relaxed. Or you can start to bring your hands towards the elbows, grabbing opposite elbows, and then framing out the face with the arms. Really great for the shoulders. So you can play around with these different arm variations, see which one serves you best now, maybe which one creates a nice opening for the chest and the shoulders. We'll take a few more breaths here. And then you can start to slowly come out. Might be easiest if you bend your elbows, press the forearms down and maybe come back through one side. So it's been a big back bend. So maybe just move quite gently through the spine afterwards. We'll find a way just lying flat on the mat. Arms by your sides, legs long. Taking a breath here, allowing your spine to come back to its neutral shape. And then we're going to hug the knees in towards the chest and find a happy baby pose. So you can grab your feet, your big toes, your ankles, maybe the shins or just behind the knees. So not necessarily going for the furthest point of the feet, but rather making sure that your lower back is super long and grounded on the mat. The shoulders are melting down. And then from there, see where you can reach in a way that your spine stays long. Okay. Taking two more full cycles of breath here. Starting to soften. Starting to release, starting to find a more restorative feeling in the body. You can bring your legs and your feet back in and straighten the legs out long on the mat. We come into our Shavasana. with the body resting heavy on the mat, releasing any final tension, any final engagement from the body. So finding a position lying down on the mat that feels perfectly comfortable. If any adjustments need to be made, make them now so that then you can drop into that super still Super relaxed, super soft place. We've moved through quite a common sequence, but allow this Shavasana to really pull all that together. Make it into a complete practice by letting your body rest and arrive at a very calm, state.
You can guide a slightly deeper inhale in through the nose. And then release it out. Maybe taking a second one like that. As you start to find small movement in the body, waking your body up from this Shavasana. Maybe stretching the body long. You can start to hug your knees in towards the chest. Gently sway from side to side. Good. And then in your own rhythm, in your own way, you can find your way back up into a seat. Maybe still keep the eyes closed for just a moment as you arrive into a seat. Keep the shoulders soft. Spine is long. And making this transition from your practice to the rest of your day or your evening, really mindful, really intentional, and quite slow so that you hold on to whatever you created during that practice and bring it to the rest of your day. When you're ready, can bring your hands to heart center. And then finally, bow your head towards the hands. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me for today's practice. Um, this was a really calming one, and I hope that served you well today. Um, I'm here every week on Thursdays, uh, so that's when I post the new flow. Um, so please subscribe to my channel, that way you get notified uh, about all the new flows if you like practicing with me. Um, I hope I see you next week. I hope I see you here next week as well. Thank you.